chapter of chemistry in EC Board's NCRT simplified series. Today we are going to discuss the chapter carbon and its compounds. Now this chapter had a large number of topics in the previous syllabus. However, this year the syllabus have been comparatively reduced and we are going to go according to the reduced syllabus. So first we are going to start about what is carbon. So carbon is an element in the periodic table and if you go by the atomic number you can see that the atomic number is 6. It is represented by the uh, symbol that is capital C. This is a symbol for representing carbon. Now carbon is having a unique place on our life. Every living cell, food, water, then paper, everything. Whatever you take, carbon has some form or other in it. Cooking gas, perfumes, etc. also contains carbon. And we can say that carbon is an essential component of our diet as well because the proteins, carbohydrates and fats are having carbon as the major component. So first we are going to study about bonding in carbon. Now if you look at the structure of carbon or the electronic structure of carbon, you can see that there are four valence electrons. Because if you go by the electronic configuration, it will be 2,4. So the number of valence electrons is 4. Now this is a special case. If it had just two electrons in its valence shell then it can lose those two electrons to become a cation right but if it is having six electrons it can gain two electrons so as to become an anion and become stable but what about four electrons either it should gain four electrons or it should lose four electrons which one is more favorable for carbon let us see it could gain four electrons to form c4 minus anion or can lose four electrons so as to form c4 plus cation but both these processes requires a large amount of energy and thus it has very little tendency to form ionic compounds. Since it cannot form ionic compounds, it will prefer to form another class of compounds which is known as covalent compounds which is formed by the mutual sharing between atoms. Mutual sharing of electrons between atoms results in the formation of covalent compounds. So now let us study about the formation of a covalent bond. Covalent bond formation involves the sharing of electrons between two atoms and these two atoms can either be same or it can be different. The bonding atoms contributes equal number of electrons. That means for one electron each or two electrons each. It depends from atom to atom. So let us take, let us take different examples to understand how a covalent bond is formed. First of all, make sure that you understand the basics of covalent bond. That is, it is formed due to the sharing of electrons between two atoms. Not like one is losing electron and another is gaining. Rather, both are having the same number of electrons with itself and between them a friendship is formed. Like yesterday we have studied in the chapter of uh, metals and non-metals regarding the ionic bonding. There one species was losing electron, another is gaining those electrons. Here it is not happening like that. A bond is formed without losing or gaining of electrons it is mutual sharing of electrons between two species that is known as covalent bond so let us study the formation of covalent bond in different species first let us take the case of hydrogen so hydrogen a single hydrogen will be having one valence electron so if i draw the dot structure for hydrogen this is how it is going to be another hydrogen is also having one electron now these two electrons are in mutual sharing and there is a bond that is formed between these two so there will be a single covalent bond that is formed between the two hydrogen atoms. So here the covalency that is the number of bonds that is formed between the two atoms is 1. So here the covalency is 1. So how do we define covalency? Covalency is the number of electrons contributed by an atom. Number of electron pairs which is contributed by an atom for sharing. That is known as its covalency. So depending on the number of electrons shared by an atom in the bond formation, the covalent bond can either be a single bond as in the case of hydrogen. If the case of oxygen, we can see that oxygen is having 6 electrons in its valence shell. So if I draw the electronic structure, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Another one is also having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now a bond is formed between these two electrons, similarly between these two electrons. So there is a double bond between these two. So here the covalency is 2. In another case that is nitrogen, the number of electrons is 5 here and the number of electrons is also 5 here. So there is sharing of 3 pairs of electrons happening and as a result of which the covalency in the case of nitrogen is 3. So this is how covalent bonds are formed and this plays a very important role in organic chemistry. 
Organic chemistry is a branch of chemistry which deals with the study of carbon and its compounds. Since large number of compounds are formed by the single element that is carbon, we are devoting a special branch for learning about carbon that is known as organic chemistry. So now let us start about this. The characteristics of covalent compounds. The first characteristic is that they are molecular in nature that is they exist as single molecules like H2, Cl2, NS3, CH4 etc. Next one is they are insoluble in water and they are soluble in benzene, kerosene and petrol. Remember I told you in the previous class also that like dissolves like. So that means polar solutes will dissolve in polar solvents, non-polar solutes will dissolve in non-polar solvents. Since water is polar and the covalent compounds are non-polar, they does not get solubilized. However, benzene is a polar, sorry, non-polar solvent and covalent compounds are also non-polar, so they are soluble. These compounds are poor conductors of electricity and another one is there is a weak bond due to weak intermolecular forces. They are having very low melting as well as boiling point. So these are some of the important characteristics of covalent compounds. Talking about the allotropy in carbon. So what is allotropy? Allotropy is a property due to which an element can exist in two or different forms which differ in the physical and some of the chemical properties and this property is known as allotropy and the different forms are called as allotropes. Allotropes are formed due to difference in either the number of atoms in the molecules or it can be due to the arrangement of the atoms in the molecules. Carbon is having mainly two allotropes, third one is also there but mainly we are discussing about two. One is diamond and another is graphite. Diamond is the crystalline allotrope and graphite is the amorphous allotrope. Crystalline form is the diamond and graphite whereas the amorphous form includes coal, charcoal, lamp black etc. So that is the examples we have to study this. Crystalline forms of allotropes are diamond and graphite. Both of these are having a definite three dimensional structure that is why they are known as crystalline solids. And amorphous solids are those which does not have a well defined shape or structure. So the examples for amorphous solids includes coal, charcoal, lamp black etc. Now, both diamond and graphite, they are formed by the carbon atom. But what is the difference? Difference lies in the bonding. You can see the structure is different in both carbon and graphite. That is because of the difference in bonding of the carbon atom. In diamond, we can see that one carbon atom is bonded to four other carbon atoms in a tetrahedral fashion. See here. If I take this particular carbon, I'll show here. If I take this carbon, we can see that it is bonded to one, two, three, four. So it is bonded to four other carbon atoms in a tetrahedral fashion. So this is known as tetrahedral, right? One, two, three and four. This is known as tetrahedral fashion. So it has a three dimensional network structure and it is tetrahedral arrangement with the help of covalent bond. Whereas in the case of graphite, graphite is having a two dimensional structure. Diamond was having a three dimensional structure, whereas graphite is having a two dimensional structure in which each carbon atom is linked to three carbon atoms in a hexagonal planar structure. So here you can see over here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here the carbon atoms are arranged in a hexagonal planar structure and one of these bonds is a double bond. Thus the valency of the carbon is satisfied. So that is the difference between the structure in diamond as well as in graphite. Diamond is having a three dimensional structure and graphite is having a two dimensional layered structure. Now diamond is the hardest substance known while graphite is smooth and slippery. Diamond is a very good conductor of electricity whereas diamond is a bad conductor of electricity. Another allotrope which is known as fullerenes is another class of carbon allotropes. The first identified fullerenes was carbon 16 which consists of 60 carbon atoms which is arranged in the form of a football. Now since this looks like the geodesic dome which was designed by a US architect named Buckminster Fuller it is also known as the fullerenes. Now, carbon atom is having the most unique property that is known as catenation and tetravalency. What is tetravalency? Tetravalency is the ability of an atom to have four bonds. So if I have carbon, it can have four different valencies. This is known as tetravalency. Another important property of carbon is the catenation. Catenation is the ability of an element to form long chains of itself. That means now this valency can be bonded to another carbon. Now this can be bonded to another carbon like this a large chain of carbon can be formed and this ability of the carbon to form large chains of its chains of itself is known as catenation. So here you can see the definition the ability of carbon to form long chain is called as catenation 
carbon forms strong bond because of its small size which enables the nucleus to held on the shared pairs of electrons strongly it is able to form the chains like this because the electrons which are present that is the nucleus is helping in holding them very close to each other now this structure can be repeated endlessly without disturbing the stability of the bonds and the compounds are formed also this can form branches as well as sub branches as well as rings so different ways of compounds can be formed by carbon either it can be in a branched form or it can be sub branched form sub branched form means if this is the chain from here another carbon branch is formed that is known as sub branching next there is formation of rings as well like the benzene cyclohexane cyclopendane etc all these are the different types of ringed compounds which are formed by carbon now catenation can also be seen in another element which is known as silicon which is having an atomic number equal to 14 because that is also having four valence electrons however seven to eight atoms of the element can be linked by covalent bonds because the silicon silicon bond is having a very small bond dissociation enthalpy of nearly 200 kilojoule per mole as compared to the carbon carbon bond carbon carbon bond is having very large bond dissociation energy so it can form large chains but this one is having very small bond dissociation energy that is why maximum seven to eight silicon atoms can join together to form a straight chain so that is known as catenation and we have studied about tetravalency also now let us distinguish between saturated and unsaturated carbon compounds in saturated compounds all the valencies of carbon are satisfied by single bonds only example is c2h6 c3h8 etc so in c2h6 what happens we have two carbon linked like this and all other positions is occupied by hydrogen that is the meaning of saturated compounds now what is the meaning of unsaturated compounds in the case of unsaturated compounds we are putting three carbons like this so this is c3h8 so this is again an example for saturated compounds in unsaturated compounds some of the valencies are filled by double bond like this or it can be satisfied by triple bonds triple bonds means we have carbon triple bond carbon single bond ch3 suppose here there is another ch3 so this is a triple bond so when there is a double bond or a triple bond that is helping in satisfying the valency of the carbon then it is an unsaturated compounds unsaturated compounds are more reactive than saturated compounds because these bonds this double and the triple bonds they are weaker as compared to the single bond that is the reason why they are more reactive as compared to carbon single bond carbon bond now talking about the straight chain compounds the compounds which contain straight chain of carbon atoms are called as straight chain compounds example includes butane pendane etc butane is having the formula of c4h10 and pendane is having the formula of c5h12 next is the branched chain compounds these are compounds which are branched which have multiple branches like the isobutane isopendane etc next is the closed chain compounds or the ring compounds like the cyclohexane cyclohexane looks something like this which consists of six carbon one two three four five and six similarly we have cyclopendane which consists of five carbons one two three four and five so all these are examples for closed chain compounds so here you can see certain closed chain compounds first one is the cyclopropane which consists of three carbons and cyclopendane consists of five carbons which are closed chain compounds now let us talk about the concept of alkanes alkenes alkynes aldehydes alcohols etc so what do you mean by alkanes alkanes are those unsaturated compounds which is bonded by carbon single bond carbon if only single bonds are present then we call it as alkanes if there is a double bond in the compound then we call it as an alkene and if it is consisting of a triple bond then it is known as an alkyne now if it is having somewhere a functional group of OH then it is known as an alcohol if it is having a functional group of CHO then it is known as an aldehyde if it is having a C double bond O group which is coming in between two carbon then it is known as a ketone group if it is having a C double bond O single bond OH group then it is known as a carboxylic acid group talking about the homologous series homologous series are a group which is denoted by a general formula that means a group of similar class of compounds which shows a regular gradation of their physical properties like melting point boiling point etc but have similar chemical properties 
and all the members of a homologous series can be prepared by same general methods of preparation and the difference between two adjacent members of homologous series is that they differ by a single CH2 group and their molecular weight differs by 14U. So this is the difference between two adjacent elements in a homologous series. Like if I take two adjacent molecules of alkanes, the first one is going to be CH4. To get the second member of alkane homologous series, I have to add a CH2. So that means I'm going to add one more carbon and two more hydrogen. So I will be getting C2H6. Next member is going to be C3H8. Next member is going to be C4H10. So since the weight of CH2 is coming out to be 14U, the mass difference in two adjacent members of homologous series is again a 14U. So that is the peculiarity of homologous series. And here we can see the general formulas of different homologous series. For alkanes it is CnH2n plus 2. For alkenes it is CnH2n. For alkynes it is CnH2n minus 2. Alcohols is CnH2n plus 1 OH. Carboxylic acid is CnH2NO2 and carbohydrates is CnH2O n times. So these are the different formulas for the different homologous series. So the remaining topics of this chapter that is nomenclature, reactions and compounds of carbon have been deleted from the curriculum. So that means we are bringing an end to this chapter that is carbon and its compounds. So we dealt with the basic properties of carbon about the covalency and the formation of covalent compounds and then we discussed about the basics of classification of the different types of carbon compounds that is straight chain compounds, branched compounds etc. So I hope you like this lecture and if you like this lecture please do like, share and subscribe to the channel and in the upcoming lecture we are going to discuss the chapter periodic classification of elements which is the last chapter of chemistry. Thanks for watching.